All right. Hello. This is Emily Wolfgram. That's me. And this is my teacher who I'm interviewing today, Ken Palzowicz. He works at Hamilton High School. Right? Correct. Yes, Hamilton High School. And this is just an interview, 15 questions about student motivation and just teaching in general. So are you ready to get yes. started? Okay. Yes. All right. So first question, um, just kind of general, did anyone influence you to your decision to become a teacher? And if so, how was that? Well, my my sons actually influenced my decision to become a teacher. Um, actually, I was a regular ed teacher. I went to school, college for a regular ed teacher, mm -hmm. um, and I substitute taught for NPS for about three years. And I was a substitute teacher, and it wasn't turning out the way I thought it would be. So mm -hmm. I left teaching at that point, and then I got um, then at that time my middle son John got diagnosed for autism. So I started uh, working nights and weekends retail <laughs> business right. to help him out because we had a lot of therapy, in-home therapy. And in 2001, he went back to school. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, I've been doing special ed with him for the last seven years. I'll try to be a special ed teacher. And I got my degree, my special ed certification. And um, 2001, I became a special ed teacher. Right, very awesome. Just write that down. All right, and then second question. Um, this is where we get more towards the motivation aspect. Um, was it hard to motivate students when you first started teaching? Um. Yes, it was because when I first started teaching, I taught, um, I wasn't teaching the population I taught now. I taught um, students with EBD, Emotional Behavior Disabilities. Oh, okay. Um, it was called the MRP Room, not Mr. P, which is who I am, but most restrictive placements. So I had kids who couldn't handle the regular classroom or were being suspended frequently or had multiple behavior problems and stuff so right. getting buy-in from there and getting motivation for them was very very difficult i eventually learned um i did a lot of social contacts with them mm. behavioral things um one thing i did was um i instituted p mart in which they earned p bucks during the weekend and on friday they would go shopping for candy and soda chips and stuff like that and they soon found out that the more P-Marks, P-Bucks they earned, <laughs> the happier they were on Friday, so. Right. You know, like, you, but it's kind of like Scooby Stacks, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Scooby Stacks. <laughs> yep, I, I understand. All right. Oh, I hope we win. Oh, well. Well, we'll find out. So, third question um, kind of goes along, ties into what you were saying earlier. Um, what do you add to your lessons to benefit students, so like prizes, people, prestige, um, projects, praise, like power? Like how do you um, add those to your lessons to benefit students? Well, um, you know, like I said, I used to do PMARC, but we, we've kind of gotten away from it now. I'm teaching a different group of kids, intellectual disability now. Mm -hmm. So um, we do a lot of more reward-based things. Like, if they get the right answer, they can pick a video to play on the smart board for everybody. Oh, okay. Or... So, like, rewards that benefit the entire class. Right. Or, okay, we're going to go to a new source who wants to spin the wheel. Okay, you've been doing good. So, we spin an online wheel about, you know, which new source, WTMJ, WISN, Fox 6 News, whatever. Okay. And they get super excited about that because it's always fun to spin a wheel. Right. <laughs> yeah, I can see them just getting excited to spin that wheel. So, Okay, so then, number four, how important do you think it is to build relationships with students? I feel like this is a no-brainer, but... Um, it's everything. I mean, you can't... Um, there's an old saying that I've took to heart many years ago. People don't care what you know unless they know what you care. Mm -hmm. You know, so, I mean, the toughest kids, um, 
you just got, once you get them on your side, mm-hmm. it's just, it turns everything around. Yeah. Um, I, I like the two and two method. Or the 10 and 2 method, I'm sorry, 10 and 2? 10 and 2. Yeah, where you talk to um, one kid two minutes a day for 10 minutes. And it's something that's totally not related to schoolwork or anything. Like, I found out a kid like WWE wrestling. All right. So two minutes a day, I would talk to him about Brock Lester or John Cena or something. And... That two minutes, it just got a personal connection with him. So, you know, and then I understood more about what he was in. Mm-hmm. So I could say, hey, you know, Ryan, if you want to, if you get your work done, we'll watch a John Cena video or something. Okay. You know? Yeah, that that's, that sounds real, uh, really beneficial, having that support there. Right. Um, so these next three, I would say, yeah, these next three questions more go towards, like, just think of a student. So think about a student that you felt was unmotivated. What behaviors did you see from that student? You can use initials if you don't want them. Okay. Um, well, yeah, I, I've got several in my head. I'm sitting there <laughs> trying to figure out which one. Um, so, and just what I did? Well, first of all, what, behavior, what behaviors did you see from that student? Um, come into class, putting their head down. Putting the earphones on, um, or not even coming to class. A lot of the kids, a lot of the students, sometimes they don't like having that label of special education. Mm, they right. don't want to be seen in the special ed class. They want to hang out with regular people. They don't mm. want anybody to know that they have that special ed yeah. label. And just trying to get over the initial hurdle of like, hey, it's okay. So, um, the thing in my class is I feel I'm more of a game show host okay. than a teacher, per se. I don't come down hard on the kids and stuff. I try to keep it light, try to keep it fun, try right. to keep it fast paced, mm-hmm. going somewhere. You know, we keep a routine that, okay, you know, it's a it's a 90-minute class. We have about 75 minutes of work. Mm-hmm. If we get it done, you guys have 15 minutes to do what you need to do. Mm-hmm. If we can crank it out faster, you might get 20. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, which, so I keep it light, keep it fresh, you know. And once they, once they realize that, they lose that tough guy pers- persona. Mm-hmm. And also, you know, you work the ten and two with those guys. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So next question. Um, well, it kind of ties into what you said. Uh, what did you do to help the students see the value of your lesson? So obviously, the um, just keeping it light and fresh. But is there anything fresh. else you did? Um, kind of. I would distance myself from the lesson. I would kind of say, hey, this is my job. This is what I'm supposed to present to mm-hmm. you. I know that you don't feel this is valuable right now. Right. I'm kind of there with you, but this is my job. Let's. It's you and me against the assignment. When do we attack? Mm-hmm. You know, kind of like almost apologizing that, hey, I'm... I'm sorry we have to bring this up. I would love to sit there and play games all day on the computer as well. <laughs> right. But, you know, I don't like sleeping in the road. <laughs> I like living in doors and eating food. So this is my job right now. So <laughs> that, That's that's pretty, That makes sense. All right. Um, so, uh, next question. Did anyone else help you motivate this student that you have in mind? Or do you was it like just by yourself? Um, well, you know, it's always a team effort. I have, um, paraprofessionals and CHAs, which are child health assistants. I, I call them cha-chas. <laughs> and, right. and, you know, I kind of, if I have a, uh, especially a kid that's hard to motivate, mm-hmm. I'll position one of them next to them and kind of, you know, have them kind of. Say, hey, okay, 
Mr. P just said this, you should be writing this down, you know. So right. I don't always have to be the one to, you know, to go over and knock on the table or say, hey, <laughs> right. would you like to wake up today and do some work? <laughs> would you like a pillow? <laughs> I don't have one, but you need one. <laughs> right. All right, so then... Next question is, what literature or resources would you recommend for beginning teachers to help motivate those students? Um, if you can think of any. There was a really cool book I read during my special ed classes mm -hmm. called Holler If You Hear Me. Holler If You Hear Me? Yeah. Okay. It's a story about, or it's a book about, not a story, true story, about a teacher who works in an urban district with totally unmotivated kids and just how they, I forgot even if it's a woman or a man, it's been so many years since I've read it. Right. It's on my bookshelf at home. Okay. But um, just how just making connections with the kids, walking in, for, you know, cold or, you know, middle of semester and then just starting winning kids over one by one, you know. And then how she won the whole classroom and how she got everybody to start seeing the value of doing some work. Yeah, that's, that sounds like fun. I'll have to look into that um, later on in my uh, teaching career, education career. Um, so then next would be, um, who do you trust to give you positive and constructive feedback on your teaching? Who do I trust or who does it? It's the question said who do you trust? Okay. I trust more my my immediate colleagues. Um, the way we have it right now is um, we have about sixty kids in our unit mm. and we have three teachers. Oh wow. And one teacher um, she does social studies. One teacher does reading. Okay. You know, we all split up the subjects. And I have a social degree and a reading background. Okay. Reading, master's in reading. So naturally this year I'm teaching science and math. Oh, wow. <laughs> but, you know, we're, as a special teacher, you have to be an expert in everything. Right. Or at least be a half a day ahead of the kids in the lesson. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I, I trust them because they deal with the population and stuff. But like what if an outside teacher and administrator comes in and says, you know, why isn't Rashawn doing his work on the computer? Well, Rashawn can't tell the difference between R and N. Mm -hmm. So he's not going to be typing anything on the computer. I have him. But I, I put the computer in front of him, so he's not ostracized by the class, and, and everybody, you know, he right. feels like he's part of the class doing something he does really can, you know? Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. So, um, next would be, how do you share ideas with other teachers? Um, Google Drive is a great help. You know, we are always mm -hmm. passing information back and forth. Whenever we get a, a lesson we create, we share it with everybody else. Mm -hmm. If we create a form, um, one thing we do is we have our own personal student behavior log. Mm -hmm. So if, something, if we don't want to put it directly into the school log where it becomes a permanent record, we can just write down, hey, so-and-so did this in my class. Next hour, could you kind of check to make sure, you know, just so okay. we get, just so we get track behavior and say, okay, you know, how many times did this student complain about having a stomach ache? You know, is it every mm. day? Is it the same time of day? Is he trying to avoid something? Right. You know, oh, um, that's, a, that's cool. Not to be in delicate, but some of our female students, they're using the the woman problems excuse oh. several times a month yeah you know it's like okay um i'm no medical doctor but i i'm pretty sure that only happens once a month right 
<laughs> you know, it's like if if you're doing that all the time, you should probably seek medical help. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, that's yeah. So, you know, we keep checking them and saying, Well, if so and so says they're on their, you know, whatever. Right. So <laughs> Okay. So, um, what advice do you have to a beginning teacher? Um Pace yourself. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> There's so much to do. And you're never ever gonna get it all done. Mm -hmm. It's it's like think of it as I know you're probably too young to remember this, but okay. um you ever watch MASH or ER? I had heard of MASH. Or the you ever see ER or any <laughs> medical show? Uh where there's a I mean, big, right. well, there's a big influx of patients, mm -hmm. and they always take the most critical things first. Mm -hmm. You know, they prioritize what they're gonna do. You know, um, and that's the same way in education. Mm -hmm. Be willing to throw out your lesson plan in the moment's notice, mm -hmm. because so just be flexible, right? Because you got a kid who comes in and they're off the wall. Mm -hmm. You know, and you can spend the whole 90 minutes just calming that one kid down mm -hmm. and turning that into a lesson about anger and feelings and stuff like that, which is more valuable than how did we get coal out of the ground. <laughs> right. Yeah. All right. Well, that's very good advice. And then these next four questions, like the, the first questions that I did um, were on a sheet of paper. These next four questions I have created myself. Okay. They're not really... They're kind of motivation related, but also kind of not. Um, but this next question is, um, how is how has teaching changed since your first year? Well, in my first year, well, going back to the 90s when I first started teaching, right. it was all chalkboards. Mm -hmm. There was no digital stuff at all. And I was a big computer guy. And I, I remember um, trying to pull YouTube videos up, <laughs> and the kids thought, wow, that was so great. Right. I remember this one classroom, I, I had, um, we had a limited cable, and I would have MTV. Mm -hmm. And they could watch MTV for a half hour if they got their work done. That's cool. And um, I was always... Trying to think ahead about, you know, how can I adjust this reading level for this kid mm -hmm. before computers even happen. Right. Um, the big thing was, as a special ed teacher, you know, the IEPs. I remember writing those by hand. Ooh. Yeah, that does not sound fun. And you have to, you know, yeah, that was just, you know, there's no templates or... So yeah, so technology has been a blessing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, this is the first year where we actually um, do the trickle-down effect of, at School of Special Education always gets the, the technology last. We finally got mm -hmm. Chromebooks for all my kids. That's awesome. Maybe. And I put them on Google Classroom and now we have assignments in there and stuff and, that they do. And It's mostly just... Um, teach, you know, ask and respond questions where I'll put the question up on the board, mm -hmm. we'll type in the answer together, they right. copy the answer into their Google Classroom, yeah. So, but I'm trying to teach them stuff along with the times, like years ago, I would teach them how to write a letter. Oh, yeah. I'm teaching them now how to write emails. So, yeah, the curriculum's changed, too, because of that. We used to work on checking account, writing checks. No one does anymore. Mm -hmm. We work on debit card skills. Oh, okay. You know, so like how to swipe the... Right. That's cool. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. Okay. So. That's pretty cool. Um, so next question, what drives you to want to improve your teaching? Um... Mostly just the fact that I look at my population of kids and I realize that the ones I have are not going to 
go out and go to college mm-hmm. or get a good paying job and start a family and stuff. Mm-hmm. And the sad fact is most of the students that I teach, after high school, they end up sitting on a couch at home or in a day program. Mm-hmm. Okay? I, um, that motivates me. I want to give them some practical skills so that they're not just homebound. Right. That they can go out and work two hours a day. They can be a part of the community. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm constantly trying to figure out a way of one thing about my, in my IEP meetings, I don't sit there and read through the IEP step by step because I'll put somebody to sleep. Right. Right. I tell the people, I write the IEP up and I say, okay, we're going to talk about three things. We're going to talk about one, what your child can do right now. Mm Mm-hmm. Then we want to talk about what they want to do after high school. Mm-hmm. And then the last thing we're going to talk about is what I have to do to get them there. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that's the job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much uh, sums it up right there. All right. Uh, looks like we have two more questions left. So first one's kind of related to the first one, like who inspired but you, but um, how have others inspired you? Um. Just seeing just the friendships I have made with kids. Just, I mean, I'll see students that I've had years ago in Southridge or something, and they're all just get a big old smile on their face, Mr. P. <laughs> or they won't even say the Mr. anymore. They'll just go, P. <laughs> you know? Um, you know, I was at. Um, well, you know, the school closed down with this coronavirus thing right. and everything. So mm-hmm. Robin and I were at Pick and Save on Friday, and okay. we saw one of my students from a distance. I, I took, she right. wanted to run over and hug me, but I'm <laughs> no, no, you can't do that, Desiree. But she's like, <laughs> off in the store, pee, pee. <laughs> and everybody's looking at me like, I'm not a pervert. <laughs> I'm a teacher. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That, that's cute, though. Like, she yeah. wanted that right. connection with you. But. Right. And I, I want, the, I'm still trying to wrap my head about how I could deliver some kind of services during this time. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, I really miss the kids. I, I miss the, you know, you know, Carl coming and giving me a fist pump every day. Mm-hmm. Can't say a word, but he gives me a fist pump. This book for me. Or Rashawn, who, you know, runs around like a, you know, little grasshopper. <laughs> just bouncing around going, Mr. P, Mr. P, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's definitely a tough time with this whole thing going on. Um, so then, the last question is kind of a big one. Um, but have you always wanted to teach her? And if not, what made you change your mind? And if yes, how was that journey? Was it hard, easy, or? Um, well, this might some, take some time. Mm-hmm. I, I actually, I was starting to be an accountant. Okay. I was starting to be a certified public accountant. I thought that was going to be the best use of my skills and stuff, um, and I was at UWM in, 19, in 1985, I was just taking an accounting class, and bombed a test, just totally Ooh. bombed a test, Yeah, and I, know that feeling. I had just started dating Robin, who was going to Alberto for teaching, mm, okay. and I thought, teaching, that'd be good, I don't want to teach her, I'll be a teacher, so I'll be a social studies teacher. Major in history, minor in economics, and everything. Okay. And then, so like I said, I, I was a substitute teacher for f- four years. One year at a parochial school, I taught eighth grade, off subjects. And then three years in MPS, just doing everything. Mm-hmm. Um, in 1993, I was over at, and now I should... I'm not going to say the name of the high school, but it's a high school on the south side. I was subbing there for one day. And um, we had like 10 minutes left in class. Okay. 
and a kid in the back stood up and went over the window. And I said, sir, you're going to have to sit down. We got 10 minutes left in class. Kid pulls a gun on me. Oh, oh, man. <laughs> and I immediately went, wow, you know, I was way out of line. You don't have to sit down. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in fact, you can pretty much do what you want to at this point. And the kids all, like, got to the one side of the room, and I stood at my desk, and the kid just kind of didn't say anything. And finally, 10 minutes later, the bell rang, and the kid ran out the door mm -hmm. with the gun, and everybody else followed him like crazy. Oh, God. You know, going the other direction. Oh, no. You know, and I, it was middle, middle of the day. I quietly packed up my things and I went down to the office and I told the secretary, I go, Spence Warner, I need to see him. Oh, he's in me right now. I go, he's going to want to talk to me about this. So I walked in the principal's office and I go, hi. Uh, two things, sir. Um, my name is Ken Pelslitz and I quit. <laughs> And I, no, I said I said three things. My name's Ken Pelzlis, Giant so and so has a gun, and I quit. And he goes, well, no. Uh, he goes, so he takes down some information. He goes, can you stick around for a police report? I said, you have my address on file. You can come and they can interview me there. But mm -hmm. I'm done. Right. And I love teaching. I was trying to figure that out anyways and stuff. And then, like I said in... Um, 2001, just, I got, I was, I was working at American TV and Appliance, mm -hmm. and I found out that due to budget restrictions, I was, I was the stereo and car stereo manager, Okay. and I found out they were going to merge departments, and with the video, okay. with TVs and stuff, and they said they only need one manager. So they gave me a choice. They said, okay, we can give you, you can go either, go back on the sales floor and sell stuff like, like you did before. Yeah. Or we can give you an $8,000 severance package. Mm -hmm. I said, show me the money and I'm out the door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I left and I was trying to think and, you know, about what to do. And I was talking to my mom and she said, well, why didn't you go back and teach it? And I'm like, wow, I don't want to be a regular ed teacher. I'll be a special ed teacher. Mm. And my first day as a special ed teacher, and everybody kind of chuckles at this and thinks it's I'm an ominous, but was 9-11-2001. Oh, wow. First day in the classroom, you're watching the planes. That's crazy. That was that was so long ago, too. Like, yes. <laughs> that yes. was a baby. So that was my first day as a teacher. I thought, this could be a great career. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is all I have. I don't know if you want any, um, just some last thoughts after this, or if you just want to call it off, or... Um, just say, you know, I mean, I joke around with people, and a lot of people go, wow, it really takes a special person to do what you do, and I always go, yeah, I hope they hear them soon, because I'm going to kill somebody. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, you really it's it's such a rewarding career because right I've done the regular teaching part and where you have thirty or forty kids file into your room and you just are teaching. Mm -hmm. This is I'm the teacher, I'm the social worker, I'm a part time paramedic. <laughs> Uh, you know, I have so many different hats. You know, I'm a nutritionist, I'm a guidance counselor, I'm a physical therapist. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just so much outside of the box thinking. Mm -hmm. So, I, would, I wouldn't want to do anything else, and I'm, I'm actually going nuts not doing it. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, I, I feel you there. <sighs> well, thank you for taking time out of your day for this interview. Okay. Um, I sure learned a lot. I'm sure that is a good experience for both of us. And I really hope that my laptop didn't just turn black because it stopped recording. But it is.
just turn this off. Okay, cool. It looked like it went through. Woo! 